Jeremiah 315. We all kind of know that because I repeat it enough times. But let's go there for a second because it hit me that it starts out with an and. And I will give you pastors after my own heart who will feed you with knowledge and with understanding. And so that begs the question, what's before the and? And this is really more for people on YouTube because I have been getting this question a lot. Like when I say a lot, maybe four times in the last two weeks from different people, I've gotten an email or a YouTube message asking me a question that this addresses. So Jeremiah 3.14 says, Turn, O backsliding children, saith the Lord. For I am married unto you, and I will take you one of a city and two of a family, and I will bring you to Zion. And then it goes on, and I will give you pastors according to my heart, which will feed you with knowledge and with understanding. I've got people on YouTube asking me basically this question. My spouse, either my husband or my wife, just doesn't get it. Meaning the way Torah, although in one case the person was intimating that his spouse didn't really have any faith. And this person just came to the way. And so it's like, what am I supposed to do? If they can't get it, they think I'm crazy. And things like that. Okay. He's talking about how he's only going to take one from this household or two from this household. All these people have people they care about. But not everybody is coming to the way. I had a talk today. We actually went to Simca today for another reason. And I had a talk with um, Joseph. We all know Joseph. About people who get it and people who don't get it and what's that vis-a-vis -vis us you know go into all the world and preach the good news I will choose who I will you know those two kind of work against each other seemingly nothing in the Bible works against itself right it's just our understanding but I think that people have to understand that everybody is not gonna get this um, and he's going to pick who he will so we started out with, I will give you pastors. Please turn to the 23rd Psalm, which most people probably have memorized. There's going to be a quiz after this. So don't fall asleep. The Lord is, I like it in King James, because I, I learned it in King James, so I'm not going to read it in Scripture's version, although I rarely do anyway. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me besides the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. We all know that. We've all probably heard that read at funerals. I have read that at funerals. I was also at one funeral where the widow said, whatever you do, don't read the 23rd Psalm. I don't want to hear that at a funeral. <laughs> okay, that's cool. Um, Who's this talking about, this psalm? It's the good shepherd, right? So who's it talking about? Who is the shepherd? Jesus is the shepherd. See, we think that, right? I mean, we, we think about that and we think like, you know, Jesus and he's leading me into, he makes me lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me besides the still waters. Jesus is the good shepherd, Yeshua. But it says right there, the, the first word, Yahweh. The Lord Yahweh. Now, we know, right? I and the Father are one, Yahweh, um, Yeshua. But still, it is Yahweh, right? The Lord. It's not the Lord like when we read in the King James Version in the New Testament when they're talking about Jesus and they say they're like Lord, like Lord and Master. This is Yahweh that's doing this leading and is the Good Shepherd. And so I thought that was kind of interesting. Um, Thou leadest me to the still waters. You make me lie down in the green pastures. Me, me, me. That me is David, right? Mm -hmm. 
David wrote this, but it's, it's a bigger picture of us, right? David is speaking for us. And so in this analogy, if the Lord is my shepherd, is my ra'ah, or it's actually Yahweh ra'oi instead of ra'ah, um, but the Lord is my shepherd, what are we? We're sheep, right? And sheep, and we have all those songs where we're the sheep, and he's the good shepherd, and that's where we're going today. I tell you guys that I'm a shepherd after Yah's own heart, um, and I use this and where we're going today as kind of like my shepherding example, if you will, the, the things I have to focus on as a shepherd. And today we get to go there in John chapter 10, which we start today. Y'all remember what just happened, right? Yeshua, blind guy, who healed you? He gets kicked out of the synagogue because, you, you know, he doesn't um, forsake Yeshua. All right, verse 10, chapter 10, verse 1. Verily, verily, amen, amen, let it be so, let it be so. This is important. That's how it starts out. I, Yeshua, say unto you, he that enters not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. Starts out right there. What's a sheepfold? It's a, like a stable where they are safe. Yep, it's a stable where sheep are safe, but it's kind of interesting. There's two kinds. There's a city sheepfold, and there's a out in the boonies sheepfold. Let's read a little bit further, and we'll come back. But you can think of it like a corral. But he that enters in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter opens, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers." And this parable Yeshua spoke unto them, but they did not understand what things they were which he spake unto them. No, no big surprise there. Yeshua is constantly speaking in parables, and most people don't understand what the heck he's talking about, what, what he's talking about, right? Which had to be very frustrating for him. All right, so here's how a sheepfold works. In the city, they had a corral, and they pay... I always, love, I always use the same name. Who are they paying to watch this? Shlomo. Shlomo. They pay Shlomo to guard it overnight. And so I bring my sheep in because I'm coming to the city to shop, to sell sheep in the morning, whatever. I'm here and I've got my sheep with me. And so I pay Shlomo. They go into the sheepfold and I go about my business. Then Roger shows up and he's got his sheep. And he comes in and he pays Shlomo. They go into the same enclosure. It's just like a big fenced-in, walled-in area. Sometimes they had a roof over it, sometimes they didn't. It's a, co a containment facility. <clears throat> and there's some guy, Shlomo, who's got to guard it during the night to keep robbers or thieves from coming in and ripping off some, some uh, sheep. And I guess to a very small, lesser extent, wild animals and stuff, but they're in the city, so they don't have to worry about that. And so the way it worked, in the morning, when I want to get my sheep, I come up and I say, hey, Shlomo, how you doing? I don't know, maybe you paid them then. <laughs> you don't get your sheep if you don't pay me. I don't know, but I'm allowed to be there. Now, my sheep are mixed up with Roger's sheep. They don't stay in their little sheep herds while they're in there. They're all kind of intermingled. And so I call to my sheep. The sheep hear my voice, and I turn around, and I walk out, and my sheep follow me. If you don't raise critters, it's really hard to understand that. But Kate can call her goats, and they listen to her. She calls her dog, and he listens to her, sort of. He's getting better. He's a still almost a puppy. And so they call it, and the other one's just like not talking to us, and they won't follow it. And so this is what Yeshua is saying. Now, a thief or a robber comes in, the sheep are going to make noise. You're going to have to steal a sheep, and that's what the porter's there to do because he can tell something is up. Another interesting thing here is, Yeshua was talking about the shepherd because literally the shepherd would go in there and go, hoo doo hoo doo whatever their little call is for their sheep. 
the sheep would follow him. What the shepherd didn't do is go in amongst the flock of sheep with a stick or a rod or a crook or whatever and start beating the sheep and saying, get out of here, get out of here. And then, oop, no, nope, that's Shannon's sheep. I can't yell at that one. Get out of here. They don't do that. They don't chase their sheep out. They lead their sheep out. Kind of interesting because we know this is Yeshua. He's talking about the greater picture. He's the good shepherd. He's talking about the way, right? Following the way. And so Yeshua is not beating people to follow the way. Yeshua is calling to his people. His people hear him. That's what he's saying. His sheep hear his voice and they follow him. What would Jesus do? He kept Torah, right? We follow him. We follow in his example. And like we started this whole thing in Jeremiah 3, 14, not everybody does that, right? The sheep that follow him, as he says here, let me see. The sheep follow him for they know his voice. And so we know his voice. We won't follow a stranger. Um, and in fact, they'll run away from a, a stranger because they don't know his voice. All right. Then said Yeshua unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep, or the door that gains access to the sheep. And that ever came before me, all that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved, and shall go in and out and find pasture. Yeshua is the way. The straight and the narrow, right? Narrow is the way, straight is the gate that leads to salvation. Broad is the way, wide is the gate that leads to destruction. Yeshua is the way. The only way, he said, the only way to the Father is? By Him. No one comes unto the Father but by me, is what he said. He's the way, and His children know Him, His children follow Him, we follow Him, and strangers, eh, it, it doesn't work. They're, the thief only wants to steal. Verse 10, the thief comes not but to steal and to kill and to destroy. Who does that sound like? Who's the killer and the destroyer? Satan. Satan, Satan right? What's, what is that? Ab Abaddon? Abaddon? Holion? What? Abaddon. Yeah. It's, it's Abaddon. Abaddon. I don't have that in my notes. It just came to me. Okay. It, it's another version for the destroyer, for Satan. So he's only coming to kill and destroy. Yeshua says, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Which then goes back to the 23rd Psalm. Not only is he a shepherd, but he's taking us to the nice grass. He's taking us to the still waters. We have life and we have it more abundantly when we trust in him, when we follow him, when we're doing the things that Yeshua wants us to do, when we're walking the way he wants us to walk, when we truly make him our Lord and Master and accept Him as our Savior, when we actually start walking what we're talking, when our, when our actions line up with what we say our beliefs are, life is better. Talking again today at Simca about bad things happening in our life. And who was the example? Oh yeah, I'm not ready to go there yet because I didn't look that up. But bad things happen in people's lives, and it's like, oh, man, this bad thing happened. Oh, no, no. And, and we just feel bad about it. We get down about it. We have negative emotions and feelings about that. Who's in control? The Father is in control. And so if we accept the fact that we are following Him and that He is leading us on this path that He wants us to go on, all things work together for good for those who trust in the Lord, right? Those who trust the Father. Um, we have to realize we have to trust our shepherd, which is Yeshua. I am the good shepherd. And the shepherd gives his life for his sheep. But he that is a hireling and not the shepherd, whose own sheep they are not, he, now this is a little bit different. He sees the wolf coming and he leaves the sheep and he flees and the wolf catches them and scatters the sheep. The hireling flees because he is a hireling and careth not for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and I am known of mine. In the field, when the shepherds were out there in, in the wilderness, they'd take their flocks out there and let them feed and water and stuff like that. At night, when they're in a bad place, they would have these corrals and they found some of them. Um, they were made out of stone. They were about this high, because sheeps don't jump over high things like goats do, evidently, rock walls. 
and they went around. It was an enclosure out in the middle of nowhere, and the shepherd would literally sleep in the doorway. He would curl up with his blanket across the threshold of the door, and his sheep, now it's only his sheep in there at this point, they're out in the field, but that way, the only way a critter can get there is to go through him. Now, I guess wolves and bears didn't jump over the wall either. You know, I don't know. There used to be bears in the area back in the, in the day. Um, but when he says, I give my life for my sheep, the only way you can get to those sheep at night is to go through the shepherd. And the shepherd's not going to let that happen because he's got the crook and the staff. The crook's to catch the sheep. The staff is a club to beat off the predators, right? And so he's going to give his life to protect his sheep. And so that's a different kind of sheep enclosure. And I thought it was interesting that we were reading this because Sister Kate and I have been gathering up all these rocks where we want to mow, like where you were digging, you saw those piles of rocks and we're, we're making more. And I told her, you know, I'm going to do something with these rocks. And at first I was going to make like a corner of a wall around the garden. And then I started reading about this and I'm like, I got this idea of making like this enclosure. But then I thought, we have goats, not sheep, and they would think it was a great play toy. <laughs> right? And they would just yeah. jump up on it and jump up over it and all this other stuff. So that just wouldn't work. They're not sheep. Um, verse 16. This is interesting. Do you remember when Yeshua said, I come not but for the lost sheep of the house of Israel? And so that's like, okay... So the lost sheep of the house of Israel, 10 northern tribes, right? They were gone and disappeared, excuse me, by the time Yeshua was walking the scene here. And they've been scattered, the diaspora. And so, okay, Yeshua was coming to get them, to bring them back in the fold. Because nominally, they were Jews, as we think of Jews today. They didn't know the coming of the Messiah, and so that, that news had to go out to them, right? So I come not but for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Well, look at this. <clears throat> and other sheep I have, which are not of this fold. Them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. Does anybody have a different word for fold? Flock, Flock is a better word. Yeah. Because, see, a fold, I'm not a sheeper. Is it, what's it called? What's a sheep person called? Shepherd. shepherd. Yeah, but you're a shepherd for goats, too. You can have a flock of sheep, a flock of sheep, which is huge, and in that flock are folds. So if we have the Shofar Mountain flock of sheep, but we've got Justin's fold and Jason's fold and your fold and my fold and your fold and your fold, we have all these different folds, but it's still one flock. It's Shofar Mountain flock. But you've got your own fold. They know your voice. They follow you and so on. It's not fold. It is flock. The guy who, who translated this originally mistranslated the Greek. Yeshua is saying, I've got other sheep out there, and they're all going to be part of the one flock. Who do we think those other sheep are in this case? Gentiles. That's exactly right. It's the Gentiles. It's those of us who are not blood-born Israelites. Um, who, you know, we weren't chosen by God through our genetics. But yet and still, we accept Yeshua as Messiah, and we are grafted into the tree, and we are now part of the one flock. It's not one flock. This is a better fold than this fold. It's one flock. One flock, one shepherd. Therefore does my Father love me, because I lay down my life, that I might take it again. Actually, we're going to stop there today. We're going to pick that up next time. Man, a lot of the conversation I had today at Simca is coming to mind right now. We use Yeshua as our example. Perfect man. Lived a perfect life. Only guy out there who ever kept Torah 100%. Gave his life for us for the fold of sheep. He gladly laid down his life, which is what we're going to pick up next week, uh, be it the Father's will, and go with that. I'm a shepherd of a flock of Shofar Mountain, and so I look at that aspect of him also. To a degree, those of you who are married and or fathers, you are shepherds of your flock of your family. It's just a leadership thing, right? That, that's all. As a matter of fact, when we read in Jeremiah 3.15, I will give you pastors after my own heart, the way that word is intended to be used is not a religious leader. It's a leader. So it could be a, a, a man like David 
after my own heart, a king like David, or it could be a subunit leader or something like that. So it's a leader of, of a flock. And so we as, as men can take Yeshua the Good Shepherd as an example for how we're supposed to treat our flock. As I told a guy in email this week, it's not for us to beg people to follow us. It's not for us to cajole people to follow us. It's not for us to, uh, as we just read here, go in there and chase them out with a stick. It's for us to call them and lead them and lead them by example and have the depth of faith that we are willing to die for our fold, if you will, just as Yeshua was for us. There's thieves out there. There's thieves that are going to try and steal away the flock. I'm speaking metaphorically now. And so we all have issues that come into our life by the adversary. When he sees a good, believing family out there, the adversary wants to destroy that. Because that's the love of Christ. That's the love of Yah. That's the obedience toward Yah. And he doesn't like that. And so he throws things at that to break that up. An elder of ours um, at Round Prairie Community Church made a comment one time, and I thought it was really good. I'm not going to ask for a show of hands here, but he did. And he said, how many people get in a fight on the way to church in, in, with some regularity, like a spat with your spouse? You know why that is? Because the enemy is trying to upset your shalom before you enter in to hearing the word of Yah and, and being in that mind. Where he missed the point there is, this, it's not supposed to be a one and done thing once a week, right? We're going to services, okay, let's put on our holy face. Let's, let's, let's put on our best behavior. Uh, I was talking uh, today again about what we wear to church. And I said at one time, I used to, because of what I did in the military, I had all these shirts with skulls on them and arrows sticking through them and bullet holes in them and a knife sticking through it. I mean, all these different skull analogy for military shirts. And it was like, I'll never wear a shirt like that to church. Well, if I wouldn't wear it to church, why would I wear it to Walmart? <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, it's not like... The father only sees me. Oh, there's Joe. Finally, I haven't seen him for a week. He's sitting in pew three. Okay. And when he goes to Walmart, I don't see him. Well, it's the same thing when I said getting in a fight before you come to church or something like that. Something disturbs your shalom. And we're supposed to have shalom all the time. Um, we're supposed to be living in the green pastures and drinking out of the still waters. And we can have that with Yeshua. Um, but we just need to keep our focus on him and that kind of goes back to last week, which I'm not going to revisit the sermon, but about the gospel armor and keeping ourselves protected. So that's the message for this week. Let's pray.